Hey, it's Judy Pfeiffer. Happy Pfeiffer Focus. Today, I have a guest with me. Her name is Stephanie Welsh. Stephanie is, and thank you for being here. Stephanie is an investor as well as a property manager. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about property management, rental properties, things like that from the owner's perspective. Okay. So a lot of times we hear things from tenant perspectives. So today I have Stephanie here to discuss from the owner side, things that people might not even be aware of. So Stephanie, thank you for being here today. Welcome to Pfeiffer Focus. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And so you have been an investor, property manager for over 20 years. Right. All right. And so tell us about it. You know, I mean, you do you deal with tenants? Yes. Okay. And, yep. And we started, we were uh, buying uh, single family homes. And then over the years, we've uh, morphed into multifamily. Okay. Or small apartment buildings. All right. So from, so you start with the application for the tenant. Correct. And on the back side, you're uh, for the most part taking care of like utilities, water, uh, insurance, taxes, Correct. noise complaints. Okay, so uh, let's let's back up then. So tell me on the building itself. Most of the buildings you're maintaining. Correct. Yes. Okay. So some of them might be brick. Some of them might need to be painted, things like that. Um, have you ever had any issues with uh, dumpsters, things like that? Oh, yes. Multi yeah, uh, lots of illegal dumping. Uh, one way we have solved the, on some of the buildings is we've gotten rid of the dumpsters and then give each tenant a, their own trash can. And so that's solved some of that illegal dumping issues. But um, illegal dumping can be very expensive. Um, we had a dumpster with waste management. And one, uh, if anything is sticking above that lid uh, or lip of the dumpster, uh, there was a charge of $190. And so that can really add up fast. And the dumpster may not even be full. Maybe a tenant just didn't get, I don't know, a lamp or something in the the dumpster properly and that's just sticking up and so um then then also just people leaving mattresses and things like that so um yeah it can be very expensive to have illegal dumping and things okay. like that yeah all right let's talk about water yes so for the most part you're paying the water for yeah the all the tenants. buildings we pay the water on that's pretty typical uh for apartment buildings to pay water and sewer so i do watch that water bill every month um for instance i just got a water bill and the consumption had increased by thirteen thousand gallons in one month which it sounds like a lot but it's a 10 unit building so it is a lot but you know so i called uh the maintenance guys and i asked them if they had turned the sprinklers on and they said yes and i said okay well that that solves that problem however if they would have said no then i would have had maintenance go through every unit to look for running toilets and leaking sinks and things like that so to, to combat that so I, I do watch that very closely yeah okay so you're attempting to be proactive yes not just you know running up bills sky high no no okay. well and then conserving you know water we don't want right. to be wasting water especially in this you know the colorado climate and things like that. sure so, yeah. sure okay so insurance Yes. Uh, insurance has increased a lot over the years. Uh, I think a lot of that's just due to, you know, insurance companies pulling out of Colorado, uh, you know, the wildfires, you know, things like that, just coverage, hail, you know, all of that kind of stuff has really we've pushed premiums. Yeah, we've had a lot mm -hmm. of hail. It's pushed those premiums up. And um, I've got one building over the past two years. This is one that's located in um, Arapahoe County. Um, over the past two years, my premiums have increased 69% which is a lot. Um, the, the lowest I've had is this one is in Adams County and this one increased 52%. So that's pretty significant. Um, and, you know, we, we try and um, do what we can to get their premiums as low as possible. But, you know, the insurance companies pretty much tell you what the premium is and that's what you have to pay sure. if you want the coverage. Sure. Yeah. Right. And then taxes. Which is yeah. worse, insurance or taxes? Right now, days? I feel like insurance is worse. Um, taxes could be rearing its head. Um, as we all know, the assessments, uh, valuations have really increased. I don't know how that's going to translate to what the tax increase will be. I, it won't be a dollar for dollar increase, but um, it definitely will uh, affect our taxes. Right now, taxes over the past couple of years have increased, you know, 10 to 15 percent. Um, 
not horrible. Um, you know, that's that's actually doable and it's it's manageable with you know rents and things like that and managing a property. But if we do see you know these thirty to fifty percent increase in taxes, it's going to be it's going to really affect that tenant because uh, you know you have to pass along some of that at least to the sure. tenant in the form of higher rents. So we'll see what happens. You know next year when, right. we, when we get our tax right. rules. Yeah. Now, a lot of people complain about their gas bills this past year. Yes. Did your gas bills go Yeah, there's a to- few. So some buildings, uh, we do pay gas, uh, which is because the building is heated with a boiler. Not all buildings, but some of them. Um, I did have one building. It's an eight-unit building, and my uh, natural gas bill doubled. So it would run usually wow. around 800 a mm-hmm. month in the winter. Uh, it was running about 16 to 1800 a month this winter. So uh, that's that's tough as well. And that's tough to manage because, again, you don't have control on mm-hmm. those gas prices, unfortunately. Right. right. Yeah. So tell me, give me an example of a rewarding part of being a property manager or an investor. Uh, you know, we have some tenants that have been with us a very long time. And I'm, I'm talking like 10 years plus, And um, I, I really try and uh, maintain great relationships with those tenants and, and keep them as tenants. I do what I can. And when rents increase, uh, we are very kind with them and don't increase them to market or anything like that. So that's how we retain those tenants. And, you know, they're, they're great. Cause I've got one guy who keeps an eye on the building for me. You know, so if he sees something, someone illegally dumping, let's say he'll call me and he'll, he'll, you know, let me know about that kind of thing, which is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing I like is I just had another tenant. Um, he had been he's a younger guy, uh, moved into our building in 2017 he, over the years, has got married, had a couple of kids, and he just moved out and bought a house. So I thought that was really great. So great. I was able to give him a good rental reference for his mortgage. And um, yeah, so that's that's rewarding to see those, you know, people like that can move on and, and buy homes. Great. Yeah. So how often do you have vacancies? I don't have a lot of vacancies. I think uh, the reason I don't um, is because we, we do really strive to make our buildings, you know, safe and clean. And we, we do maintain them. Uh, very well. Um, but I, I, you know, vacancies are people buying homes or moving out or just, you know, moving, leaving the state or something like that. So I do have vacancies, but I would say my vacancy rate is super low. It's the turnover is very, very low. Yeah. Okay. So for you being an investor, property manager, Mm -hmm. it has been very rewarding for you. Yes. Okay. Definitely have challenges, but it's been very rewarding. I do. I do enjoy it. Yes. All right. And if someone was considering getting into the rental business, mm-hmm. what do you have a couple of tips that you would share with people? Yeah, um, you know, really do your due diligence. Um, you really need to, you know, t- find out what those insurance premiums are running, and you know, find out what the taxes are running, and make sure you really uh, don't buy on emotion. As I always tell people, uh, you know, you just need to really sit down and analyze the numbers. The numbers will tell you yes or no. It just really don't buy any mo- on emotion, just because you want that building. Um, and, and sometimes that's hard because you, you might really think a property is going to do great. Um, you also need to really check what the market rents are running in that. You know, they, they do mm-hmm. differ uh, based on the class of building you have. A class C building, the rents are going to be a lot lower than, you know, maybe a class A building. Also, class C buildings, you probably have more, you know, maintenance because they're older buildings. So you might need to put in new windows. You might need to, you know, get a new roof on that building. And right. so that's something to certainly consider when you're analyzing it. Like, what's that capital investment going to be when you buy that property? Because it could be. 30, 40,000. So that definitely needs to be figured into your analysis. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I w- do always ask my guests to have a closeout quote. So do you have a closeout quote for us today, Stephanie? I do. My closeout quote is if you don't have time to do it right the first time, how will you ever have time to do it over? Well, I really, really appreciate you taking the time and answering some questions about investment properties and property management. Thank you for being on Fight for Focus. And for those viewers, thanks for watching.